wave speed. Remember when you see the pause video indicator to do exactly that and take good notes. Let's start off by talking about a few things that wave speed does not depend upon. Uh, first of all, amplitude. Uh, this is kind of counterintuitive because if we have particles, the faster you throw them, the more energy they carry. But with a wave, the amount of energy they're carrying does not have anything to do with speed. So the wave speed does not depend on amplitude. So energy is proportional to the amplitude, but not the speed. Here you can see the oscillating motion of the crossbars as a twist travels down the center rod. The speed of the pulse is equal to the distance it travels, two meters, divided by time taken for the complete round trip. The speed of the pulse does not depend on the shape of the pulse. A larger pulse travels at the same speed. A small pulse travels at the same speed. Wave speed does not depend on frequency or wavelength either. Uh, wavelength and frequency do have things to do with pitch or color or other properties of waves, but the wavelength and frequency do not uh, affect the wave speed. A small pulse travels at the same speed. This broad pulse travels at the same speed as the others. The broad pulse travels at the same speed as the narrow pulse. Frequency depends on the source. Wind out at sea creates water waves. The different lengths of air columns and horns creates the different frequencies. Different frequencies of light give off different colors. There are different radio frequencies, different frequencies from different lengths of string uh, with a guitar, different frequencies that are modulated with our vocal cords, and of course different frequencies of heartbeats. All of these waves have frequencies that are generated by their various sources. This next video uses an oscilloscope to visualize or to show the sound wave that is created. And it also uses a frequency generator to generate various frequencies. This pure tone gives us the classic sine wave. Increasing the frequency causes the waves to bunch up. So what does wave speed depend on? Well, wave speed only depends on the medium, what the wave is traveling through, and the characteristics of that medium. So for example, if we were in a helicopter above the beach here, and we're looking at a section of the water coming in from the deep ocean out here, and so this is a top-down view, up in this region is our top-down view. Um, when we see the water waves out in the deep ocean coming in, we would see that they were pretty equally spaced. Their wavelengths would be equal. But then what we would see as uh, the waves got into shore here, they would seem to start to bunch up. These waves start catching up with the waves that preceded them. And you get that bunching up. And if you've ever been standing on the beach and looking out at the waves coming in, you'll notice that the waves bunch up. There's only one reason for that, and that is because the waves that are closer to the beach are slowing down. So the waves out here in the ocean are uh, from the ocean coming into the beach are moving faster, and the ones when you get close to the beach are get moving slower and slower. They all have to go through the same slowing process, though. That's why they don't catch up with each other until they're reflected, but they do slow down. So what is controlling that slowing down? Well, the medium is changing. The characteristics of the medium is changing. In this case, what's happening, now we'll look at the side view down here. This is the side view of what we were just looking at. Out here, the water is pretty deep. 
and so it didn't affect the wave speed very much but when we start getting in here the water starts to become pretty shallow and there's interaction with the uh, bottom here and uh, the characteristics of the uh, wave speed the characteristics of the medium change and the wave speed changes so wave speed only depends on the medium what the wave is traveling through In this next video, we have two wave machines stacked on top of each other. The one on top has shorter rods than the one on the bottom. This changes the media, and let's see what effect that has on wave speed. The two machines using two different sized crossbars represent two different media. The speeds of the waves are not the same. Now let's take a look at some pulses on slinkies. These are two identical slinkies, except one on the right is stretched a lot more than the one on the left. Therefore, it changes the characteristics of the medium. The speed of a pulse is increased when the tension in the slinky is increased. The speed of a pulse is increased when the tension in the slinky is increased. Now we'll have three distinctly different media that will run pulses through, a garden hose, a slinky, and a brass spring. The speed of a pulse depends upon the linear density as well as the tension. Compare the speeds. How do your results compare with your expectations? The speed of a pulse may be greatest in a large tension, low linear density media. Is it? As you just saw, wave speed only depends on the medium. It only depends on what it's traveling through and the characteristics of what it's traveling through. The density of the material, the um, tension of the material, and so forth. So, <clears throat> one interesting thing that does occur is we can generate waves with different frequencies in a medium by disturbing it more frequently or less frequently. When we do ad adjust the frequencies, if I increase the frequency of disturbance, what happens is the wavelength adjusts to the wave speed. So the medium determines the wave speed, the source, whatever is causing this disturbance, creates the different frequencies and wavelength adjusts to both wave speed and frequency. This next video uses a ripple tank where light is shined up through a thin pool of water and the waves that are generated are shined on a screen for the camera to capture. So here's the ripple tank, and this is a top-down view of the ripple tank. We have deep water up here and shallow water down here. And these waves in deep water are approaching, and this is where the race is going to begin between the shallow water and the deep water. So you ready? Set and go! Whoa, do you see how much faster the top waves are than the bottom waves here? Do you see how much faster they are for the deep than they are for the shallow? Maybe we can catch one right here, and that's going that fast right there. We catch one down here, and this is going pretty slowly down here. Kind of hard visually, but you can hopefully see that the top was a lot faster than the bottom. So the deep was faster than the shallow. Well, let's take a look. The frequency is the same for both because this generator back here that's tapping on the ripple tank and creating these plane waves coming forward here, it's creating the frequencies. So the source controls the frequency. Once they're generated, you can't do anything else about the frequency. It's already established. The depth, however, changes the medium here. So the wave speed here is faster, and the wave speed here was slower. Well, if you think about that, that makes a little bit of sense then that this wavelength right here is going to be different than the wavelength down here. So the frequency stays the same for both, the wave speed is different, and the wavelength adjusts uh, accordingly. So again, shorter wavelength 
for slower, longer wavelength for faster waves. We now have the background we need in order to generate our wave speed equations. Let's uh, go back to our fundamental definition of speed and speed is the rate of change of distance but with waves a change in distance is measured in wavelength and a change in time is measured with period. So our delta D over delta T becomes the wavelength divided by the period and that is one of our wave speed equations and wave speed is measured in meters per second. So wave speed is equal to the wavelength divided by the period. Remember that period and frequency are inverses. In this equation we have 1 over the period and so 1 over the period is the frequency. So wave speed is also the wavelength times the frequency. And this is the most common of the wave speed equations. It's also measured in meters per second. Let's practice our wave speed equation. In this particular example, let's check out what we know. We know the wavelength is 0 0.02 meters and the period is 0.5 seconds. So if we're going to find the wave speed, then we're going to use our wave speed is equal to lambda over the period t, since we know those two quantities. Our wavelength is 0 0.02 meters, our, wave, our period is 0.5 seconds, and doing that division we get 0 0.04 meters per second. We have one other way we can exercise wave speed through our other wave speed equation. This time our wavelength is 2 meters, but now we know the frequency. So if we know the Wavelength and frequency, we use our other wave speed equation, V equals F lambda or lambda times F. So the wavelength is 2 meters and the frequency is 100 hertz and our wave speed is 200 meters per second. And so for our summary of the wave speed equation and its parts, uh, we can see here that wave speed, remember, only depends on the medium and is equal to the frequency of the wave, which only depends on the source, times the wavelength. And wavelength is what adjusts to both the wave speed uh, through the medium and the frequency that was generated by the source. That's why I kind of like this form of the wave speed equation, where wavelength is equal to the wave speed divided by the frequency, because this one really shows the true dependency of wavelength on both speed and frequency. So this is your wave speed equation and uh, all of its parts. Scratch is parting thought or rhyme. Good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.